Hello, everyone, and welcome to AWS Heroes in Conversation. Today, we have Thorsten with us. So, Thorsten, welcome to the channel. Welcome. Perfect. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Thorsten, uh, would you be kind enough to go ahead and introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Thorsten Hüger. I'm an AWS DevTools hero and cloud consultant focusing on cloud automation, and I help tech leads of small and medium-sized enterprises to automate their cloud infrastructure. Awesome. So today I think, Thorsten, you're going to tell us more about AWS Cloud Development Kit. So over to you, sir. And we are more than you know excited to hear and learn more from your knowledge. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, I will talk about the Cloud Development Kit and one special part of it, namely developing serverless applications and some thoughts I had about this and some um, improvements I made with a third party construct for this. Sure. So there are some URLs. I think they will be in the video description about the tooling I'm talking about and also again to the CDK project and the Progen project that we're using to scaffold and manage the setup itself. Absolutely. So just for our viewers, we I will have these URLs posted in the description of the video. And as always, we do encourage you to visit those URLs because those URLs have additional information on this topic. So perfect. Exactly. Perfect. So what's the scenario that we're talking about? We're creating serverless resources like REST APIs, AppSync, mm -hmm. GraphQL APIs, step function workflows, and so on. All the things that you need in a serverless environment. And that's something a lot of people do, but there are some yeah, problems with the current approaches. And basically okay. there are two ways to do this. So one way is to use the specification files themselves as your source of truth. Um, coming back to the REST API example, there's a CDK construct that's called the spec REST API, where you just put in your specification file and let the CDK do the rest. And the, the advantage is you only do the work once. You specify everything in your open API YAML, and that's it. And you don't forget any changes that you made to your specification to reflect them in CDK. But okay. the problem with this is it's completely out of scope to manage then the details. So you have no type safety for your configuration because it will just, yeah, there's a string, and I'm exactly in the string. So it doesn't understand what's in this definition. So when you want to add a Lambda function, for example, as the handler for an API endpoint, it's basically just string magic. So you put it in, whenever this um, occurs, please replace some random string with this Lambda function A or N. So you're back to what you did with CloudFormation or any other config file, but you lose all the benefits of the Cloud Development Kit, namely type safety and object-oriented programming. And you need to do a, a completely manual permission management. So you replace the ARN of the Lambda function in your spec, but it doesn't mean that API Gateway is allowed to call this Lambda function. You need to create IAM permissions for this, completely manual. So there's the disadvantages of using the specification um, file versions of these constructs. And then there's a second way to do this, defining the whole API in constructs in CDK, which gives you full flexibility and the power of CDK with all the type safety, the type safe integrations with resources, automatic permission management, all the things. But you need to have fully redundant information because you have an op op open, I open API specification. Mm -hmm. It's completely ignored. So you rebuild everything that you have in your specification file again in CDK. And whenever you change something, you have to change it in both files, which is redundant and error prone. Sure. Also, you only get only a limited functionality of the spec files. All the model definitions, all the example definitions, all the things you have, for example, in OpenAPI are not supported by the native constructs. So you just lose all this. So between what, these two, Thorsten, I mean, uh, uh... Is there a particular way that you prefer? Would you say that you should go with specification files or one or the other as per your experience? I mean, or depending on the situation, you would say, okay, use specification files over here versus use manual constructs over here. Um, so 
as depicted, both have advantages and disadvantages, and it's it's definitely a thing. What is better for your current project or problem? So sometimes okay. the specification file approach is better because it's a lot of things and and it's easier to not forget anything about if you have hundreds of endpoints. On the other hand, it's very very yeah nice to get this fully type safe integration. So you want this thing. So for Example step functions, which, which is the last disadvantage in this list for the manually defined constructs. If you deploy them completely in CDK but with all the CDK native tooling for, for step functions, it's hard to read the code. So in this case, I definitely yeah, prefer the specification file approach. For REST APIs, normally I use the constructs way because I get all these integrations with Lambda and I don't link or hook up the wrong Lambda functions or forgets about some permissions. But none of them are really perfect. And that's exactly what I'm um, going to talk about in, in, in some seconds. Uh, another way that I thought both of them are not perfect. So both have a good way, but also mm -hmm. some disadvantages that are really hard. So I thought about there needs to be a way in between. Sure. And that's exactly what I then took the approach and say, yeah, maybe we can use the specification that's already there, but instead of leaving it to AWS to interpret this specification on deployment, maybe we can look into the specification and create the basically manually created CDK code automatically. So we still use the specification as our source of truth, but in CDK, we use the power of the type safety because we generate CDK code based out of the specs and then can use the CDK version with the type safety. So that's the general approach about this. Okay. And how does this work? Using a combination of Progen and CDK. So CDK will then do all um, the, the provisioning, but we're using Progen upfront to generate constructs. So Progen will manage our project. So there's a base class for a serverless project. Mm -hmm. And then it has some feature classes where say, I want to have a REST API based on this spec, or I want to have a step function workflow based on this ASL file. And Progen will then generate a CDK class deriving or yeah, implementing a base class uh, out of this package. And then you can use this in your CDK code to get type safety in your CDK code, but still using the benefits of the specification approach for your um, definitions. Is Progen open source, Torsten? They're both open source tools. They're both by the CDK team, both by AWS, with Progen not being branded AWS for, for good reasons, because mm -hmm. the hope for Progen is to become the de facto standard for project management. Sure. And if it's labeled AWS, there is no way that Google, Facebook, whatever, will eventually use it. So the goal is not to brand it AWS, but it's uh, fully paid and, and developed by AWS. And it's also basically a CDK. It's a cloud development kit approach. It's the same approach as the CDK, but it's not generating AWS resources, but development project files nice. it's okay. the same approach it's a um yeah an object oriented way to define your configuration and it will then create files in your repository for you like a eslint configuration ts config package json requirements txt for python whatever correct okay but in an object oriented way sure so and that's exactly what i want to show you now nice okay so I will bring up VS Code. Okay. So what, what I did here is I created a new CDK project, which is a normal CDK project based on the Progen prototype of AWS CDK app. That, that's exactly the, the, the benefit. So I have this, um, this entry file here which just says, it's, in this case, it's a serverless project, which is derived from my uh, library. Mm -hmm. But it's basically a normal Progen CDK project. 
And if I then run progen with npx progen, it will generate all the files you see and that are marked with pj for progen here. They're all managed by progen. So they're not, not only scaffolded like with Yeoman or other tools, they're really managed by progen. So whenever I want to change something, I change it here in this file. Sure. And all the PJ files are generated by Progen and managed by Progen. Being it a mergeify configuration, all the GitHub actions for releasing, for change log generation, for pull request linting, all the TS configs, the license file, all the Git ignores, NPM ignores, everything managed by Progen. I don't need to think about it. Somebody decided what's the best way to configure a TypeScript project, and I will get it. And if somebody decides it as a better, better way, the next update will give me this better way. Okay. And now I said, okay, adding to this serverless project, I want to create a REST API, a DynamoDB table st data store, and a workflow with step functions. And the only thing I need to specify here is, let, let's uh, look at a REST API saying, I want to have a REST API. It's called my API. And the definition file is in source definitions my API, API YAML. Looking at this file, this is my open API specification. Okay. And here is where I configure everything that I want and need. So I do the, the models, the path, all the things that are there are configured here. Normal contract first approach, everything I want to do. Sure. And then I run npx progen. In this case, nothing should happen because I already did it. But we already see, yeah, it's starting the open generate API and it's creating things. Going into the created folder for the API, two files yeah, are created. One is a model file. It's using the normal TypeScript Open API tooling to generate a class model out of my specification. So I will get a definition of my operations, a definition of all the components of all the models that are used in my API, which I can use in a Lambda function to get type safe integration of events that are coming in. It's not an any that's coming in. It's really, yes, I expect to to receive a JSON in this format. And I can validate it because I have a model in my Lambda function. And the other thing that's generated, it's pretty easy. It's In this case, it's just generating a new class extending this REST API, but it's a generic REST API using this model that's created under the hood. It also created for every endpoint a Lambda function Okay. That I can then fill in. So, so the specification said there's an add to do, a get to do, a get to do's, and a remove to do. So it generated these files for me, scaffolded them with some, yeah, 500 not yet implemented, but then I can implement it here and it's fully type safe. So I know that I'm getting a to do object here and I'm, yeah, meant to return a to do object with a create and so on. And all the Lambda function generation. And hooking it up and all the things are completely managed by the tooling. The only thing is I need to instantiate it and say, I want to use a new REST API. And I can provide a database. And if I provide a database, all get head um, and so on um, calls will automatically mm -hmm. get read access to the database by okay. generating the Lambda functions. All put, post, delete will automatically get write access to the database. So I don't need to specify this. This is handled for me. But obviously, I can create more options here and change this behavior. But that's what I can do. And I can do API dot get function for operation. So I want to change one Lambda function, for example, for the get to do's API. I get a fully type safe way here. I want the Lambda function that was generated for get to do's. And on this object, I can do whatever I can do with a Lambda function object. But I don't need to specify all of them because they are defined by the specification. Sure. And exactly the same is true for workflows. So having a normal step function ASL file that defines 
all the things you need. And then I say, okay, my, my function name is a placeholder. So dollar curly braces, reminder lambda of type lambda function. Whenever my generator finds this, it will create this file for me. I don't care about the content. And I can use it like I want to have a new workflow. And my configuration is because I use the name reminder lambda in the variable definition and, and told the system that it's a lambda function. It creates a type safe property here of a lambda config. I want to know which handler I want to use here as an I function. So I really type safe. I want to have a lambda function, not a string. And it would automatically enable the workflow role to call the Lambda function because it needs IAM permissions and all the things. So this is all handled for me. The same with, oh, I want to have a table. So it will automatically grant um, correct permissions to this DynamoDB table. It will hook up, do I need ARN or do I need a name or whatever resource? All these things are handled for me. I just tell it, this is the Lambda function I want to use. This is the DynamoDB table I want to use. Do it for me. I can go in and configure everything, but I don't need to. Okay. And that's exactly what I think is a benefit about this tooling. And I'm using um, one previous version of this thing um, with a lot of customer projects because it makes it so much easier to, to write serverless applications because I don't need to either replicate all my endpoints. Mm -hmm. And obviously a real application doesn't have four endpoints, but right. way more. I don't need to replicate all of them in CDK code or have string matching in some kind of YAML file and hope that everything is hooked up correctly. So one is hope. And as a colleague of mine always says, hope is not an operations, um, a way of doing operations. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, I don't want to repeat everything because there is a high chance to make errors if you repeatedly configure 50 resources. One okay. will be different than a specification. Yes, and it becomes difficult to even handle and manage that, right, across all the different redundant files. So it becomes a nightmare to just go through all of that. Absolutely. No, this is awesome. So thanks for sharing this, Thorsten. So, I mean, since you're using this with your customers, did you get any direct feedback from your customers? What is their reaction when they see something like this? Um, in general, very positive feedback. Um, what, sometimes they don't even see the code because they just tell me, please build an application for me. So they don't okay. care, but I can be way faster with it. And that's what they really love. Being, having their application faster, no matter how I do it, but it helps uh, being faster. Sometimes, um, so this concrete version is now a new implementation that's changing some things, but the previous version is very, very similar. That's what I'm using as customer projects. And even one thing in the library now was changed that the way it creates REST APIs was a back and forth with the customer. They improved a lot of things and contributed this back into this project. So it now has a completely new implementation of the REST API function by one of my customers. When they said, yeah, that's we improved a lot of things that the previous version had, but we improved it with, oh yeah, there's a bug in how AWS provides security management in REST API and things. And they added all of these things. So it's not only that they get better way to use it, they even contributed back with, we fixed some things and we made it even better. Okay, nice. No, this was awesome. Thanks for sharing this. And thanks for coming today, Thorsten. But yeah, maybe sometime uh, later we can, you know, maybe record some other session with some other topic, but thank you so much for coming today and sharing your knowledge with us. Perfect. Yeah, really, really. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay. So I stop it now? Yeah.